Alright guys, so now that we know the basics of how an FXML project is set up and structured, we can hop back in here and start learning what all of this code actually means. Now since FXML is based on the XML language, the first line of code that we should have is this XML declaration, pretty much saying what version we're working with, what type of character encoding, and this is pretty much just a standard stuff. And I say that we need it, but in fact, we can delete this and it's going to run fine. And that's because by default, if it doesn't have this line of code right here, it's just going to assume that you're working with 1.0 in UTF-8. So you can delete this. If you want to be explicit, you can put it in. But since we're just using the default, then I'm going to go ahead and leave it out, make it a little bit cleaner. Now, let me go ahead and show you guys. All right. So without you know learning anything any specifics at all just looking at this we can already see basically what's going on we have a vbox a vertical layout and inside we have two items a label and a button alright looks cool so anytime you want to use any of these items a label a button this layout we first need to import those classes so just like in regular Java, whenever you want to use something, you of course need to import it. We have to do the same thing in FXML. Now, whenever we're importing something, we can do so in one of two ways. So let's say that we wanted to import the button so we can use buttons. We can explicitly type out button right like here, and it looks in this package for a class called button or if we want to be lazy then we can just use this asterisk and this means import every class from this package in other words import every control in a single statement and this imports every single layout so we don't have to type all the classes manually so that's how we can actually import classes to use them and once we have them imported we can actually add them to our layout now just like Java has properties Whenever you want to add a property to, let's say, this label, probably shouldn't have closed that. For example, the text, the label and the button have a property called text that you can, of course, set. You can add it as an attribute. So write the attribute name and set it equal to whatever value. Now, there's actually an alternative, let me clean this up, alternative way that you can, my freaking mouse fell over again. My vertical mouse, it's like, a foot tall. <laughs> All right, I'll show you guys another way. So you can either add it through attributes or you can embed the attributes as separate tags. OMG, are you going to autofill for me or not, Haas? All right, so you can add another label, be like, uh, okay, this is label two. Now, if you run this, check it out. So again, this and this accomplish the exact same thing. However, this uses the attribute syntax and this just adds another element inside. And I actually like the first one because it's a little bit cleaner. So this is what I'm gonna do most of the time, this syntax right here. Now, as I said, the brains behind every single FXML file is a controller. Now, anytime you wanna make a controller or link this FXML file to brains behind it you use this attribute right here now every single fxml file can only have one single controller that's an important part that we need to remember we can't add two controllers to this every template only has one single controller so of course use fx controller the package name which is in this case sample and whatever the class name is in this case controller all right, sounds simple enough. So now let's actually learn how to use this to handle user interaction. And for this first example, I'll just say whenever they click this button, we'll just, you know, print something out on the screen. So in our button, the first thing we need to do is we need to give it an ID. So this ID can be used by the controller to pretty much link these together. So it's going to reference this ID and it's pretty much a variable name. I'm just going to name it button. And now that we can have a reference to button, we can just uh, call some math method like, um, I don't know, like handle button click or something. So handle button click. 
So in other words, I'll show you guys what's going on. So in your controller, what you can do is you can now have a variable called button and of course, if I highlight that, there we go. If we import button, all right. So whenever we start our FXML project, what it's gonna do is it's gonna look through and find all of the IDs. And we found one ID called button. So then it's gonna hop over to to the controller and it's going to say okay so you have a variable called button I know that whenever you use this variable in your controller that it's pretty much referring to this button right here so now we can say something like button set text and it's going to set the text of this button they're now linked together now whenever you want to use a button to perform an action or in other words call a method you need to call on action and the value of this is pound sign whatever your method name is so now if we were to do something like public void what I call it like handle button click is that what I called it copy that make sure I got it right alright so now we can have a method right in here to handle the button click and of course whenever you do that our error goes away so that's how you tie items and actions to your controller. So now we can just say something like a uh, system out print line and we'll just say like uh, run some code the user doesn't see since this is going on our controller and actually since we have a reference to button remember this is referring to the button on the user interface we can just say something like set text equal to what do we want the text to say on the button like stop um, touching me kind of weird and perverted but oh well so now if I run this I got my old one to run in start up a new one check it out we can now say I love bacon whenever we click it this code runs behind the scenes so you can do something that the user doesn't see and also through your button reference you can do something like change the text in other words change the user interface so that's the basics of how to use a controller again write your controller right here so it knows what class it's supposed to look to whenever it's looking for IDs the ID of any item refers to the variable and the action refers to what method you want to call whenever an action is performed on that item. Simple enough. So yeah, for now, thank you guys for watching. See you next time.